Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my Dirty Wall review. It is Monday, July 24th, 2017. From. Where were we? Doing? <laughs> oh, wait, DC. Nation's capital. I heard Linda was in attendance. Of course, now she's a cabinet member for President Trump. Like the small business thing. Anyway. As Wallow's World of SummerSlam continues, because SmackDown's World of SummerSlam will officially begin tomorrow night. And after this shitty ass pay per view last night, they have a lot of work to do when it comes to hyping up their portion of the SummerSlam card. But Wallow's doing a good job of hyping up SummerSlam. We got uh, the main event is set. And you see my sub out of it. The main event is set for SummerSlam, a match that I think a lot of people, including myself, saw it coming. You know, saw the build for it. And we also got another SummerSlam match new. So we have two SummerSlam matches made. Seeds planning for other SummerSlam matches. And we have the uh, Wall in Ring debut for Jason Jordan as Kurt Angle's son. And the reaction for him doesn't do him any favors. About everyone buying into this entertainment child thing. This, this gimmick can be dead on arrival, kind of like Mike Kanellis' gimmick. At least that's fun, but Jason Jordan, God, they gotta make it work. And I hope it doesn't get a bad one. If the reception here for Jordan was bad, couldn't imagine how's it gonna be next week when they're in Angle's hometown of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Speaking of Angle, he opened up Wall. Uh, he said a little water today. Some good matches here and there, but a lot of building up for SummerSlam. Starting out with Angle announcing the SummerSlam main event. Stemming from the events of last week when, as I expected, and many other people predicted that Braun Strowman would interfere in the match between Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns, which was to determine who would face off against Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So as Angle was about to name the opponent, Braun came out saying that you better say after who's facing Lesnar, Two words, Braun Strowman. Say that I destroyed Roman Reigns. Unlike here, Joe, I won my match at Great Balls of Fire. And I deserve Lesnar because I'm not scared of him. But then Joe's music hits, and he had a little qualm. Say that I was inches away from beating up Lesnar at Great Balls of Fire to become the new champ. Then, as the eyes would have it. Woman Reigns would come down. Saying, what have you two done? You guys have done nothing much since you've been here. You got a couple wins here and there. But how many championships have you won? Are you a former tag champion? A former WWE champion? And a former winner of the Royal Rumble, which I won in Philly. And boy, they were loud that night. Kind of a little diss at the Philly crowd last night because Woman did treat about the Philly fans being so quiet during the main event of Great Ball of the pay per view battleground on Sunday. Of course, my reviews on this channel. If you want to get my views of it, it was probably one of the worst pay per views of the year. Fast Lane is probably worse than a lot of people's eyes. But probably this is the worst SmackDown pay per view. Was battleground. So, as all of you guys were jockeying for position, Angle made the announcement that we were all, ex we were all itching. It kind of. Thinking. At SummerSlam, the main event for War will be Brock Lesnar, Brock Strowman, Roman Reigns, and some more Jello. That's right. A fatal four way for the Universal Championship. And the brawl was on. All three guys started brawling all over the arena. Security guys had to get involved. And one of the security guys got his literally his ass kicked. He got tossed like a motherfucking rag down by Warm Strowman. Braun Strowman. Damn what a bump he took. He almost got killed. And then security wasn't enough because the Wall Superstars came out. A lot of heels came in. And then Woman just spilled out of Strowman. But Strowman laid out Woman with the power slam to end the segment after a ball between these three. I thought we were going to triple threat tonight. But we're going to get a triple threat next week. And who knows? Maybe Brock Lesnar will make an appearance next week. Now that he knows who, who we'll be facing at SummerSlam. 
Now, I said last week, I said it two weeks ago, but the possibility is with this fatal four-way happening. It'll give Lesnar great people to work with and carry his ass. He's got Joe and Strowman to rely on. Roman can't do shit. Kind of, you know. He's kind of did well. Oh, he and Lesnar did okay at WrestleMania 31. It wasn't that bad of a main event. Which was better when Rollins cashed in. So, and also, not only because Lesnar got great guys to work with, to hide his flaws, he also has a chance to lose the championship without actually getting pinned, which is what they should do. And another thing, I kind of mentioned this in my Battleground review, that also gives a chance for this to be a non-shitty Lesnar main event. And they decided to give Lesnar the SummerSlam main event yet again for the entire pay-per-view, not just the wall main event, but the entire event pay-per-view main event. This main event will not be sucky like the last two SummerSlams. I said it last year at SummerSlam, they should never put Brock Lesnar in the main event again. There is an exception to that, is that if Brock Lesnar's main event is a multi-man. Because the match won't suck like the last two years, hopefully. Because last two innings of SummerSlam, which were ironically four hours like this year's, they all ended bad. Now, his taking match was not bad until the ending. His match against the Viper and the Old, on the other hand, well, SummerSlam made event in five years, in four years. So, Lazarus doesn't have a good record at SummerSlam. Now, he's been a big part of SummerSlam the last couple of years, since his return. SummerSlam 2012, shitty made event. 2013, his match against Punk, not bad. His match against Cena, not bad. But his last two SummerSlam matches, but the last one was really shitty. So hopefully this one won't be shitty like the last couple. And we'll end SummerSlam on a good note for once, not on a shitty one. We got a lot we got a lot of shitty innings in SummerSlam's last couple of years. We need a positive ending for SummerSlam for once. You know, in the last couple of ending kinda of bad with, you know, Punk getting screwed over by Del Rio, 2011, 2012, the shitty Trip Rage from Lesnar match. Daniel Bryan being screwed by Trip Rage to Wayne Orton in 2013. Lesnar Lesnar ending was decent, 2014. The screwy endings the last two years been like, mm. so see what happens for this year's SummerSlam main event. If it is Lazarus' match against Strowman, Woman, and Joe. Now on to our first matchup, a no DQ match as the Drifter, Elias Simpson, will be taking on Finn Balor. The feud continues, especially after what happened last week, stemming from last week to make this match happen. Of course, we saw that Elias went on double J on Finn Balor. Smashed the keeps all over his head. And he kind of addressed that as he tried to sing in the ring to a lot of heel heat. More heel, he's got more heel heat in this area than uh, the Jinder Mahal got. Anyway, as Elias was singing about his guitar and about Finn Balor, he got interrupted once again by Finn. And the match started with Finn Schroeder being all taped up, the non-surgically repaired arm that was targeted by uh, Samson last week, targeted yet again after the initial fury from Balor. Elias would come in, get some big moves, dispose of the arm, putting it against the post, doing some big moves to him. He looked good in here. You know, I think... Even though he had a weird little history at NXT, he would find his character a lot more that Chimmy Boy would find in NXT. But he's getting a lot of heat. You know, I love that every time he speaks, he just says, don't speak until I'm done singing. That gets people wound up even more. So it's Samson got some big moves in, taking on Balor. Decent little spots here in a fun little matchup here. Balor would come back alive as a big X. Grabs a chair at one point and smashes the hell out of Samson with it. And then, uh, find that chair shot. I think both exchanged some shots. Battle would near with the big drop kick in the corner. Do the coup de gras onto Samson. But just before he got the pin, 
and I knew this too. Bray Wyatt would come out of nowhere, lay out Balor with the sister Abigail, initially initiating Samson to pin Balor one, two, three. The Balor Wyatt feud is now in full swing. We saw the tease last week. We thought we would get this feud a few months back, but it got delayed, and now the only good thing about this being delayed till SummerSlam, we're gonna see the demon come out. The demon king, Mr. Finn Balor. One of the different year mix for Balor. One year ago this week was like the first wall after the split. Of course, that's when Balor won all those matches to become the number one guy to take on Wallens for the new Universal title, which you later win and get injured and have to relinquish. He's kind of in a what? But ever since returning, you know, not being put in meaningless, being put in meaningless feuds. Although it's going to help Elias, though. Elias got the win on Balor and protected Balor because he didn't lose clean. Because he lost in a screwy ending with a purpose match. And I knew that because there was no DQ. I think I said that last week. About why I getting involved. He got get involved last week. After the match. But I got involved in the match tonight. Costing Balor to win. So I'm going to get them back to SummerSlam. Seeds planted even further. For that feud. And it helps Elias though too. You know, he had a good showing here. Against Balor. And a fun little no DQ match. Should have used a lot more weapons though. But hey, it's TVPG people. Now, on to an X matchup. They said on the graphic it was going to be Jason Jordan's debut match on Wall. They did have a recap of his reveal as Angle's son in an interview with Kurt Angle about his opponent being Kurt Hawkins. But instead of the Hawkins Jordan match, they actually lied. His match wasn't next. It was actually in Zomore against Big Cass. A rematch from Great Balls of Fire. So, Enzo had kind of got a little mind games going with Cass, of course, with Big Shell. His kind of buddy, you know, even before Cass revealed himself as the guy who attacked Enzo. You know, Big Shell got involved last week and was sort of stay in the back by Enzo. As Enzo won to handle this one on one with Cass. Had a little decent little promo to hype the crowd up. As he was trying to get his hands once again on Cass, but it was kind of like a carbon copy of their match in Great Balls of Fire. Despite Enzo's best efforts, he just got destroyed by Big Cass. Who the fuck Cass is getting not much over as Enzo is? Enzo's the good guy, they're supposed to focus more on the big guy, and Enzo's more love still. He's still more over than Cass is as a heel. But he is getting some good castle chance. Great way to get kids to say a swear word in the TV PG era by saying castle. That's your leave way around TV TV 14. Anyway, Cass is destroyed. Android big moves, big kicks. And again with a big boot. Quick little finish here. Quick little squasher here. Like I said, we match. Like the matchup, Great Balls of Fire. But as Cash is dealing on Enzo some more, here comes the big show to try to make the rescue. But Cash threatened to beat up Enzo more as Big Show walked in the ring. And the big show got in, beat up on Cash, trying to live a choke slam. But then Big Show will be taken out as Enzo got tossed in the big shell and Cash would kick Big Show right in the face. And delivering some big elbows, knocking him out and looking tall. And we could get a match between these two at SummerSlam. This should be SummerSlam pre show match. Big Show and Cass. You know, they had like little altercations, didn't have a proper match yet, so they're probably gonna get it at SummerSlam. The pre show should not be a main show. I know it's a four hour SummerSlam, but not every match deserves to be on the main show. Now, on to a woman who should be getting a lot more pushing. Emma. Well, it's tough to be pushed when you get injured a lot. You know? That's not the Emma stuck in a lot. You know, Emma's a great athlete. She's one of the big members of the women's revolution, but she's kind of fumbled on the main roster. First time she was on the main roster, she was, of course, the bubbly dancing type and didn't get over. We saw that through a lot of dancing gimmicks that went over in NXT that didn't go over main roster. She got repackaged and had a great one at NXT. 
when she came back as the evil Emma, came back to be monster last year and got injured. And it took like forever for her to come back as the ill fated Emmalina storyline. And then she came back as the evil Emma and got injured yet again, right before WrestleMania. As she was starting to feud with Dana Brooke, and we haven't seen her for months either. So Emma's gonna have been on Twitter saying about why is other people getting opportunities like Sasha and Bailey, who will be facing off against each other for a title shot at SummerSlam against Bliss. And she's getting ignored. A healthy scratch. For once. So Angle's like, you want to prove yourself? Good news. You're an action tonight. But I'm afraid I've got some bad news. You against Nia Jax. Is that my baby face? Anyway. Emma just got destroyed by Nia Jax. Nothing to talk about here. I think it's kind of punishment for Emma snorting off on Twitter. It's like a punishment. On and off screen. <laughs> Jack's got a new finish. Instead of a leg drop, she got like a front flip set on. I was impressed by Naya doing that. And the one, two, three victory. Quick little squasher there by Naya. Getting the victory over Emma, sadly. Emma's getting demoted yet again, man. But it makes. It, it's sad. It makes sense because they can't really rely on Emma because she's gotten injured so many times recently. So it's, it's tough to push her when she gets injured a lot. But he still pulls Sasha Banks because she gets injured a lot too. Like they push Emma. She's an injury prone as Sasha's been sometimes. So, but I hope Emma gets out of this one. But a lot of people went once. Like the cruise weights or, you know, or what? You know what I mean? They're not getting a lot of airtime. They didn't even have a proper cruise weight match tonight. But we did have a little storyline development with uh, Akira Tozawa having his issues with his shoulder and more importantly, issues with. That is for Neil. He was supposed to wrestle the boy, stemming from last week. You know, the boy's been talking in the arm. Of course, the match got cut last week, and the Zawa was angry and won another shot against the boy last week on 205 Live. And I think Neville got involved in the finish. So the Zawa, despite being all taped up again and not being cleared to wrestle by anybody, the Zawa still won the fight. And ignored doctor's orders and ignored the orders of Angle and more importantly the orders of Titus O'Neill to come out to the ring and lay out a challenge for Davari. But Davari's music didn't hit. Neville's music hits. Saying that, Kira, have you forgotten all this stuff that's been happening to you? This problem with Davari. You lost confidence in your hurt shoulder. It's all because of me. All because that you couldn't beat me. At Great Balls of Fire for the Cruiserweight Championship. And we will probably get a rematch between these two eventually. You know, the building up the rematch, but we may have a new ingredient. The volume himself could be involved in this scenario. As uh, Tozawa and Neville going for a brawl. Ending up with the volume coming out after Tozawa nailed the backflip senton from the top rope landing on his arm. And that's when this boy came in, like I said, attacking attacking the arm of Tozawa and then attacking Neville at one point. He laid them both out with his Copa Twist Lariats. That was a cool little Lariats. Laid them both out. So, we may have the volley, a new, maybe unwanted ingredient to the Cruiseway title picture. He'll be facing off against the champion tomorrow night on two of non-title. So it can be very interesting to see the ball get pushed at least add a new face to the title picture. Should be selling out like damn, damn, but hey, what the any new faces in Kuzay Division getting uh, getting a title shot against Neville. Even though it's tough to say who's gonna defeat Neville, because Neville's push is at the expense of the other guys. You know, as much as we love King Heel Neville, all of his opponents have been demoted ever since. So now we're on with our next matchup. The number one contenders match for the women's title at SummerSlam. We know we'll be facing up against Naomi at SummerSlam, and it's Natalia. A lot of people mix about that. Should have been shot against Naomi, or even Becky Lynch against Naomi. But Natalia, she's been demoted a lot. You know, she's probably one of the most misused women on the roster. But her character now, 
is he not over enough to, to, to get a title shot at Naomi? Let alone get one at SummerSlam? The match would be okay. But we'll see if one woman's title match would be better. But at least we have two good women fighting over that shot. We have Bailey against Sasha Banks, reprising the feud from NXT. A little bit of a friendly rivalry because those both be his best friends. Can Sasha turn heel already? This might be the motivator. We've been waiting on to see Sasha finally turn heel. Anyway, uh, fun match between these two. They always love some good matches. Not as good as the matches on NXT. Especially their thrilling match at NXT Brooklyn. And their 30 minute Iron Woman. Woman match. NXT TakeOver. Respect. In 2015. So these two had a fun little match. With Bliss and Ringside delivering commentary. Both women took the big moves. Of course, uh, Bailey was trying to go for the elbows a couple times, got it. Both girls were going for the finishes at one point. Bailey was trying to do Bailey in the belly, it got counted. And at one point, Sasha did lock in the bank statement at one point to Miss Bailey. Bailey would try to counter it for a pin, it went nowhere, and they had some good action, great spots, great bumps both women took. Especially Bailey took some big bumps. And Bailey looking more aggressive recently, trying to undo what the company has done to her since she's been a main monster. Especially against Bliss. So I was like, it'd be interested to see what direction they're going to go with. Are they going to go with a clean win for one of these two? To make it a one-on-one -on -one match? Or have someone interfere and make it a multi-women match at SummerSlam? We didn't get a multi-women match because nobody interfered. Like I thought Nia would get involved. But that didn't happen. Instead, Billy was laid out at one point by Sasha. Sasha was going for a big fog splash. When she did connect on it, but then she got the pin Bailey, but Bailey would reverse it for a pin herself, and she would get the pin in the victory over Sasha to challenge Alexa Bliss once again for the women's championship, the World Women's Title at SummerSlam. The only positive here is that we don't get a multi-women match. You know, I would like it, but we already got possibly multi-women, multi-men matches on the pay-per-view. We're getting a fatal four-way. For the title, universal title as the world main event. We may get a multi team tag team title match. We have seeds planted for that during a tag match later on in the evening. So we can't afford any more multi people matches, especially for titles. So it may give Nia Jack something to do. Gotta give her something to do now because she won't be facing for the title. Despite a little relationship with Bliss. But, uh, we have Bailey going up against Bliss. Again, Bliss said it best on the headset that she ruined Bailey. And unfortunately, she and the writers and all on creative have ruined Bailey ever since her debut on the main roster. Especially her feud against Bliss this past spring did not do her any favors. This is your life, everybody. Never forget. Even though it's hard to try to forget it. Yeah, we want to forget it. But damn. You mean the feud was horrible for both women. But this is an opportunity for them to right the wrongs of that shitty ass feud. Bliss is trying to cleanse herself. She had a great match against Banks. Minus the ending at Great Balls of Fire. So that's why I thought Sasha would win. But when you really think about it, Bailey does kind of have a decent story that could be told here. She has beaten Bliss. On two occasions the last two weeks, in a singles night title match and a tag match. And this SummerSlam will once again be in Brooklyn. They have a great opportunity to wipe the wrongs by having a great story to tell. I hope they don't fuck it up. Because this is the arena in the city, Barclays Center in Brooklyn, that Bailey defeated Sasha Banks for the NXT Women's Championship. And NXT TakeOver Brooklyn won. And what a story would be. That last year in Brooklyn, she would lose the NXT Championship Women's Rematch against Asuka in what would be her final NXT match to come back one year later in that same building and beat Bliss for the Women's Championship. Good story to tell. Great potential to tell it. Hopefully, they tell the story right. And hopefully, this feud won't be a stinker and won't fuck up both women like the feud did in May. And no more stupid segments like This Is Your Life. That ruined both women. And then barely more damage than Bliss. So, 
It harmed both women in the long run, but it harmed Bailey even more. But now Bailey's trying to come back, you know, and start to climb with the winds on Bliss and the possible story they can tell, you know, with Bailey's history in Brooklyn. And like I said, I hope they do it right. And then on to our next matchup, the in ring debut of Jason Jordan on Wall against Kurt Hawkins. God, I think no one's buying the gimmick. I, no one's giving it time. You know what I mean? The reaction for the big reveal last week, there was a lot of suspicion about what this angle big secret could reveal to be like a Stephanie return. Happily, it wasn't Stephanie return. Happily, it was going to be Dixie Carter. It ended up being an illegitimate child storyline with Jason Jordan. And the reaction tonight for Jordan when he came out and more poorly his promo. God. His promo was like, what? You know, it was crickets. And compared to the reactions other people got. Right after his backstage segment, you had Ambrose and Wallens. And they got cheered. Like, their reaction was like, yeah! Jordan, when he came on, was like, yeah. The, the storyline's not working. Trying to do it in a non kayfabe world. When kayfabe is considered dead, it's tough to bring back an old school storyline. Trying to bring back old school things. We saw what happened when they tried to bring back the flag match and the Punjabi prison match at Battleground last night. Total epic fail beyond recognition. Both those. She would never be seen again. So trying to bring that old things can work. But trying to make back a storyline, King Faye playing, ain't gonna work. Crowd reaction, God, like I said, if this reaction is any indication, the reaction he's gonna get in Angle's hometown is gonna be bad. He's gonna get a reaction later on as he took on Kurt Hawkins in a squasher match. You know, trying to look good in his first singles match, improving that Gable's the Shawn Michaels. He's the morning genetic. Gable's the better Mike Puss. He always was. He was like the. Glue that held the team together. Like, he was the brain. He was the one that kind of started the team. That egged Jordan on to start the team. To begin with, and Jordan was in a what? After he broke off from his first tag partner, Ty Dillinger. And both guys are fumbling. Anyway, um, Jordan would get the win here, even though it's been a fumble. Michael Cole fumbles, calling Kurt Hawkins, Cut Angle. Saying at one point, oh, Jason Jordan's tossing around Cut Angle. He really said that. I made fun of Cole last week for some botches. Now I'm calling him out on those botches yet again on this week's episode. So Cole, you're a douche. And you just made a list once again for botching. So after that little match and getting better reception, but still, Jason got a long way to go to try to milk this gimmick. And a lot of people are saying, oh, this could lead to something else. Like, the big payoff is not exactly Jordan coming out as Angle's son. There's going to be a little bit underlining. Maybe like Jordan's a plot. Jordan's like a ploy to sucker in Angle to bring back Trip Ranch or something. So we may get a bigger payoff eventually. Yeah. Time will tell. Now on to an interview segment, or an attempted interview segment with the Revival. Revival's back finally after the, you know, the debut of the Mania and got a little setback when Dash Rowder got injured as wired up jaw. Broken jaw, got wired. But now they returned, beating the Hardys last week after attacking him two weeks ago, proving that they are the top guys. There's a great promo here. King Charlie did a curb. But as the Bible was making their intentions known to target all the world tag teams, especially the tag champs, the club would come out. On well, their faces now, they got a good little pop interrupting. Uh, interrupting, uh, the Revival more pop than they uh, have when they were heels. Maybe they got a big pop because they interrupted the Revival because they're part of the Bullet Club. Fuck the Revival. I love saying it! Anyway, uh, of course they called the Revival a bunch of nerds! That's when comedy kind of works, you know? They tried comedy with the club last year and it didn't feel organic. It felt washed and forced. Especially the feud against New Day. Those segments were almost as bad as the Bliss Bailey segments. Especially this is your line. Anywho. Um, it would lead off with a match against Revival at the club. And a fun little tag match between these two teams. Revival dominating early. But a club coming in. Of course, both these teams do have something in common. 
They both beat the Hardy Boys. Revival beat them last week. Club beat them two weeks ago. So that's when the Revival made the in-ring return after being seen in the all end zone casting. So as these two teams are balling, and the club got a little advantage early on, it got a little pop, more pop than they have been. But they're more of a heel team to me. But it could still be healed. Maybe the trainers, like the dude with Charlotte on SmackDown. So as the club took over a little bit after the quick fury from the revival, quick little fun tag team match, leading up, leading to the Hornies coming out, distracting the club at one point. Now, they they had one of the events in the revival, but instead they distracted the club. And the revival took advantage by delivering the shadow machine onto Anderson, who was distracted by the Hornies. And the victory for the revival. But then the Hardys ran for the ring, attacking the revival, wanting to date them. A twist of fate was delivered by Matt, but before Jeff could do the twist of fate follow up, the swan time, the revival would roll out of the ring right before that would be executed. So, uh, I kind of alluded we may have a multi tag team title match. We could have like the club, Revival, and the Hardys against Sheamus and Zoll. Unless they do decide to have these three teams face off in some sort of match to determine who will face off against Sheamus and Zoll. We should get more building for that tag team title match next week. Because we got, you know, the build for the World Every title match, the Universal title match is set, the Women's title match is set, and now we need a tag team title match set. For a wall. And also for SmackDown. We could have an Usos New Day rematch. We had Wale at Ringside. He's from the D.C. area. Virginia. So he was in the area. He was a master of the rap battle. Recently on SmackDown. And he's a fan. Got unbanned. You know he had a little altercation at a show. But now he's no longer banned from the WWE events. There you go. By the Machine Gun Kelly song. Should be banned as theme songs. For WWE events. Anywho. He's okay. Probably be the new Eminem, but he's not as popular. I know he had a hit last year with uh, the girl formerly of Fifth Harmony, who was sang the national anthem at WrestleMania a couple years back. Now on to our main event of the evening. Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose taking on in a three-on-one handicap match. The Miz and the Mr. Arch. Miz and Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. Now, Ambrose and Rollins still haven't settled the differences from three years ago. It's the first time they've teamed up together in three years. Because Ambrose did some teaming up with Reigns. And Reigns did team up a couple times with Rollins after Rollins turned babyface. Especially against Jericho and Owens a lot last year. But it's the first time we've seen Rollins and Ambrose team up together. Since the breakup of the Shield. And Ambrose still had his issues with Rollins. Especially after Rollins kind of stuck his nose into... Ambrose has issues with the Miz after Miz chatted about doing the Mizzies a couple weeks back, starting this whole situation. I want the Ambrose Miz view to end, but I think Wallace Miz could be interesting. And we could get a multi man match out of this for some of the same. Anywho, despite their trust issues, still, especially from this backstage segment that happened, Ambrose and Rollins did try to recapture the magic of the Shield. Minus Reigns, of course. As Ambrose and Rollins appeared to sell the issues, beating up on the Miz a little bit, and wanted to get their hands on Miz, but Miz went all the way to the quick tag out. But then, after the initial fury from the good guys, the Miz Swans would isolate Rollins. He looked good in the later half of the matchup, especially Axel and Bo really looking good here, double teaming. Even Sheamus is all over watching. Maybe the Mizzlots can be added in a tag team title match on SummerSlam. Make it like a five team. We don't want another five way. Damn it. They like the number five. They're like four ways and more probably five way. Especially with the women on SmackDown. Need their own stores again. Instead of being bundled up together. Anywho. I like anywho anyway. That's a segue to go back to this match. In any match on my review. So. After the initial isolation of Wallen, especially with Miz coming with the eight kicks, the hot tag was made at one point. Two Dean Ambles coming in like a house of fire. Use any active that you want. Coming in with big clotheslines, everybody taking out Miz. And there was a little botched 
I thought it was a botch, but I... Miz and Abel's was holding up on the middle up at one point. Miz was maybe going for a DDT on the wall, but then recovered from that attempted botch and got Ambos wall up. Needed to mention that. So then Ambos and Rollins at one point. Double flute, suicide dive, double on two. Axel and Bo on the outside. And Ambos came back and gave us a big move on Miz. Teasing duty these at one point, but Miz would counter it. Trying to do the skull crushing finale. He nailed it. But Rollins would come in to break up the count. And that's when the suicide dive would happen. And then Miz would try to do a second skull question finale. And then Rollins came in with a springboard off the top rope. And that would be coupled with the dirty deeds by Ambrose. And the 1 2 3 victory for Ambrose and Rollins. You know, the issues were settled, kind of. And Miz got pinned by Ambrose, continuing their feud, sadly. They hugged it out. You know, it seems like, hey, all's good. They're all together, kind of, again. You know, as they hugged a couple times during the match. But at the end, Rollins was trying to do the whole shield fist pound thing. But Ambrose didn't want none of it. Baby steps to have Ambrose fully embrace a shield reunion. At least some of his trust issues with Rollins was solved tonight. But not all of it was solved, as we saw by Ambrose refusing to take the fist pound from Rollins at the end of the match, following their victory. We could get like a triple threat, Rollins, Miz, and Ambrose for the IC Championship at SummerSlam. Might be building towards that, because we thought we'd get like a, maybe a tag match at SummerSlam. But, we got that tag match tonight. Between Miz to watch with Miz against Ambrose and Rollins. You know, the numbers didn't do Miz and the Miz to watch any favors. They had the upper hand with the one man, but two halves of the shield beat three Mizzes and Mr. Raj any day of the week, sadly. So, uh, there you go. Fun little main event, decent little main event. And we could get like a multi man out of this. Or at least another, like, we don't want another Miz and Bulls one on one match. Wads is a great ingredient to add. You know, at least it adds something new to the Miz and a new wrinkle to the already idol installing. And not doing anything, Miz Ambos rivalry. That was, like I said, a couple weeks back, imported from SmackDown during a superstar shakeup. Hopefully the feud does end at SummerSlam. No matter what type of match this IC title match will probably be. Or if it's a tag match, after all, we'll see. And with that being said, that is it for my attack review of WWE Wall. With that in mind, you've been attacked. By the review from Zach. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. See you later.